Right, so welcome to another podcast, ladies and gentlemen, RGM podcast time. Uh, and I'm joined by none other than Aaron Starkey from the Slow Readers Club. How are you doing, mate? You okay? I'm okay, mate, yeah. Living are you in sure? Normal. <laughs> are you sure you're okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know it's been a while since yeah. we... Yeah, go on. You're taking every day as it comes like everybody else, really. Yeah, no, I get you, mate. I get you. And it's been a while since we last had a chat. I think it was two or three years ago when we were driving around in the car. Um, yeah, yeah. Just just on the build up to the Build a Tower album. That seems like five yeah. minutes ago, but... <laughs> yeah, it's mad. Yeah, it's, uh, I think we were... Had we, had we done Albert Hall at that point? Yeah. I don't know, maybe we were, maybe we were due to do Albert Hall. Yeah. But yeah, it's been... Um, yeah, been good. Well, <laughs> up until last year. It's been well, I know it's... It's definitely interesting times. There's a light in the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's not gonna we're not gonna get anywhere near it anytime soon, are we? It's still rumbling on, but um we are where we are, uh, and that's why we're creating new content to try and engage with new people online because that's all we can do at the minute, isn't it? And you've done and the band's Absolutely. done really well and the band's done amazing at that. And we'll we'll come to how the slow readers have diversified and adjusted to this new world that we're living in. Uh, what I wanted to start off with though, I just wanted to, you know, because since we've last chatted, you've had this big, amazing gig at Apollo. Mm. Um, and I were interviewing Pins who supported you recently. Um, and they talked me through their day building up to the Apollo and they had quite an eventful day. Kyoko went missing. She, when, she were open, when, she, when she were opening up for you, she fell on her ass <laughs> during oh, the right, gig. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> she had an eventful day. I was just wondering, you know, to play as a Manchester band, playing that iconic venue, what was the build up to that day like as a band? And, you know, just talk us through how much was, fun that must have been. It was a bit been. of a weird one because. Um... Sorry, you're breaking up, mate. One sec. Um, yeah, they, yeah. They, it was a weird one because we, we, we were all still working. I mean, I, I, I took the day off work, but Jim was working in the day. Wow. Um, so you can't, you, your mind's occupied by work to a degree. But yeah. I, I, uh, on the big shows like that, I start to get, I go into myself a little bit. And mm. uh, start pacing around, and um, yeah, my mum and our parents were there, and our parents live in London now, so like that, that was some an unusual thing. That was a bit of extra, something else to think about. Um, but you know, it's great that we were there. You know, it was amazing. It was a bit our biggest ever gig, so it was great. Did you? Part it, of it. Is it like Christmas Day? You wake up at like five in the morning, and you're just like, <laughs> what time sound check? I just want to be there now and crack on with this. But yeah, I've still got really hours to go. Like, yeah, I don't, Liz gets really annoyed with me when 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 we when we've got a gig on or something like that, or because I've just nothing else comes into my head and I'll sort of walk yeah. around and with me head in the cloud or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean it's it was obviously we wanted everything to go right. Um, it was, it had been a long time coming and it was mm. good. It was fortunately it was good. Um, you know we had a great team team around us like you know Phil on sound that produced our albums and Nash. Who told yeah. was doing the lighting and everything, so we knew we could put a decent show together. Um, but yeah, the, fe- the feedback was great, and it's uh, you know there's a live album of it and everything else, so it's a big part of our history now. I, um, I was there, I was there, mate, an, an amazing night, and it was just great to see the joy on your faces, really. Just to you know, just to I don't know, it, it quite like a it was an event, you know, you, you, the gigs are gigs, aren't they? But the, these type of things are just like moments in history that you know we're just gonna um be around forever really i think oh cheers man well uh, yeah i mean it, uh, it's unusual isn't it for a band that still had day jobs to, that i didn't really i mean we'd had to we've been signed to modern sky at the time like an, yeah. an indie label but we'd had we spent a lot of time like we got to um albert hall level without a manager or an agent or any of the usual sort of machinery that bands have around them yeah um and it was all fun driven really like you know and uh, and the tunes obviously are what, yeah. dra- what draws draws people to us and the live show and everything else and but it's our, mm. band, the, our bands that helped build us up to a decent level you know um and hopefully it'll be back at some point <laughs> yes i think i've got everything across toes and everything i'm bored aaron yeah. <laughs> i'm proper bored mate um so um yeah, so I saw you. You were featured on this is just an interval uh, documentary recently, 
And it was interesting what came out of that documentary with that 90% of a band's revenue stream comes from live gigs. Yeah. So the bands had to diversify, hadn't you, to find new revenue streams to, to continue this business that pays everybody's wage and mortgages and all that kind of stuff for you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I've, I've noticed different ways how you have diversified, like Patreon and um, interacting with fans in new ways at all. I, I, just talk us through... Talk us through all yeah. of that, really, and the mindset. Well, really. and yeah, initially when it when it first all kicked off, we were like, uh, we would. It was right at the beginning of Joy Return tour should have been happening. So like that album, yeah. um, I think it was release week or late, near enough release week. Um, so we were just thinking of ways rather than going and doing those in stores, uh, ways that we could keep people engaged and keeping people, mm. you know, coming and checking us out. So we did. Initially, we did some lockdown tunes, like um, each of us in a, in a corner of a square playing our own parts, being live, yeah. uh, and stitching those together. We were one of the first bands to do that, and then Bilbo did it, and Blossoms did it, and probably a few others. Um, yeah. yeah. And that, those went down really well, and there was little bits of, you know, I'd, you know, like everybody else, I was stuck in the house, and I'd, you know, sit at my piano and yeah. play bits of, everything now by um, RK Fire and, <laughs> and then play, play, play our own tune and stuff. And all of that, I think so, showing that um, the other side of us really went went down well. And I think it it opened up different side of us. I think we were, we were talking to camera a little bit and stuff as well, mm. which we're not, we wouldn't naturally do. We wouldn't, know, we wouldn't try and present ourselves that way. It's not like we didn't, we're not part of the YouTube generation, like kids yeah. that have grown up that, uh, you know, aspire to be YouTubers and, the part that's part of the sort of um, what they see as a yeah. as a as a personality, if you know what I mean. Whereas bands, you know, normally don't don't be they'll do interviews and do things yeah. like this, but they don't put themselves out in yeah. Way. Sure, um, Is that a... but yeah, then you know, financially, we we do pay. Oh, sorry, what was the last bit there, mate? Just broke up. Sorry. Sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, financially, you mentioned Patreon before. We we yeah. The, with the gigs being like 80, 90 percent of our income, we needed to find different ways of uh, bringing money in, and <clears throat> we thought, you know, we we had people approach us about doing fan clubs before, actually, yeah. Um, and we were thought, well, you no, know, the, you know, there's a Facebook fan club, and we don't really want to have a subscription based thing. But then there's, you know, we had some content uh, that people hadn't heard before, like there was a a track mm. that wasn't on Cavalcade that was around those sessions, um. There's been other like home demo tracks uh, and stuff like that we've shared on there. Um, Cavalcade Live digitally most recently. Um, so it's stuff that people wouldn't ordinarily get. And we did Zoom calls in there and uh, giveaways of like yeah. you know, signed lyric sheets and posters and all that kind of stuff. It's just an extension of the community, really. And then we did sure. like live, live stream shows and all that kind of thing as well. Yeah, you mentioned the second to last album it's hard to keep it the joy of the return which pretty much yeah. it must have come out this time last year weren't it because this is this is the time of last year when the virus started i know i, I this this week because it's half term this week last week i were in italy and i'd just come back and i was on the way to work on the monday morning uh, and i got a phone call from my boss saying you've been in italy have you even seen the news this morning about it all blowing up over there and then they yeah, sent yeah. me home to isolate because i had a bit I had, I had a bit of a cold and i was sniffling and all that kind of stuff so they sent me on. So this time last year is when the virus really like started to enter everybody's like world. This time yeah. last year, and it, and it was about this time of year when the album were coming out. Yeah, so right. I, I yeah, imagine I mean, that put a lot of strain on you. Yeah, I mean we're in the street. First we knew of it really. We were well, obviously we'd seen the news and stuff, but first uh, interaction we had with anybody where it's like, oh, you know, they've they've been in uh, could have potentially been in contact with Dave mm. from Modern Sky, Dave Pitcherlingi. Mm. Um, had been in Beijing because obviously Modern Sky is a Chinese yeah. label. <clears throat> he came to see us at Power Street Studios when we were recording some acoustic tunes and um, National Institution, which was the B side to the way. Uh, so the, the the album Joe the Return had been well wrapped up by that point, and it was in the lead up. We were signing all the um, all the artwork for uh, for Joe the Return and stuff, and anticipating the release. And he he'd come over, and we we're all like, you know, touching elbows with him and going, you know, stay back, yeah. and all that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we did. We didn't. I, I think it was one of those. I thought. I personally thought, like at the time, I thought it might be like SARS or something like that, where it yeah it happened somewhere else. And 
you know, it's yeah. a tra- tragic tragedy for some somewhere else. Uh, didn't anticipate it being a global thing, but yeah, there we are. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think John the Ten came out early March, so we just literally gone into lo- like gone into lockdown or whatever, like two weeks out or something, a week or so out from when the tour was supposed to start. Yeah, I, I just remember being in Manchester, seeing the banners all over town, and <laughs> yeah. just thinking, yeah. the, jo- the joy of the return is, is, is the next album going to be called Joy of the Return again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was a weird, weird title when uh, uh, come to think of it. But yeah, I mean, you know, we, we it was bad, but I mean, we ended up getting a top ten album with it. Uh, I think yeah. people rallied ra- round us even more because um, mm. maybe maybe that played a part in 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 that chart position. Really, people were like, you know, God, they can't tour, they can't go and do rec- go don't yeah. go and do in stores. So it might might have might have made some of our diehard fans buy another copy, which is you know, very good of a, um, yeah. but yeah, it's still, you know, the album's still out there in the world and, and <clears throat> we've done li- live stream shows, but yeah, we've got two albums worth of material now to introduce to the set when we come re- back to live properly. Yeah. That must be another dream come true to say you've got a top 10 album though. That's yes, great. Be. Yes. Do you get, do you get any, what do you, how do you like, how is that officially like, given to you that information do you just find out on the charts or do you get like a uh i think we got do you get to get some balloons or out you had an inkling in the daytime yeah i don't think you yeah. get a trophy or anything unless you <laughs> one day you should do but, uh, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. i'm runners up I'm runners up. <laughs> <clears throat> um yeah i i don't know we, we, we found out and you found out in the in the afternoon did you just get a phone so, call yeah. then so, well yeah that our, uh, our management will have told us at the yeah. time yeah I think, uh, or, or we've got an email or something. But yeah, it was, you know, great. It's, it's yeah. It's not really. It doesn't um, doesn't make us any more likely to get on on MTV or anything or whatever, whatever the equivalent is these days. But you know. Yeah. It's, okay. You know, so you 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 made an album in lockdown, ninety one days in isolation. Yet again, is my my favorite one on that album, mate. Proper rate tune that one. I'm just banging that album out just a when i heard oh slow readers they've done an album in lockdown i'm thinking oh will it be rushed will it be like just a bit just something to bring out but it's it's it feels even more an evolution of the band really it's not there's not mm-hmm. and and there's different sounds in there as well and different yeah uh it's just different and great so what made how did that occur so obviously it wasn't a planned album but no I think we were just um, we started writing just because we couldn't tour. We had a lot of time. Um, we started writing at home. It was a very different process, um, and I think and we felt as though because it was a lockdown album, we had a lot more freedom to. Um, I don't know. I don't know why we didn't feel we had freedom necessarily on Jeremy Sim. I don't know. Maybe more pressure of it right. uh, being a proper big label release and all that kind of stuff but it, I think we were just like well we'll try some different things and um, it was it wasn't you know people couldn't say no within the band or yeah it's, it's easier to sort of get things across sorry Lisa, I'm on the phone call sorry that's my daughter <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, um, she's yeah. alright yeah but um, yeah we, we we had lots of uh Lots of different ideas knocking around and we'd share them mm. like over WhatsApp or whatever. And it, it might be like Kurt would have a riff or a drum beat or I'd have the synth part or whatever. And then we'd just build on top yeah. of that. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud of that record. It's, it, it, and, and as a direction, as a, a, as a creative process, mm. I definitely, definitely want to keep it as part of what we do. Uh, I think um, because when you're in a band, when you're in a room together and you're jamming stuff out, you tend to gravitate to the stuff. Uh, like yet again, would 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 survive a, a practice room session all day long because it's a banger. You yeah. know what I mean? But the more delicate stuff, like um, like I wanted to, or um, I think mm. it was a summer summer tune on there, yeah. um, wouldn't necessarily get get worked on in the practice room because they're just they're just chilled out and it's not don't get people buzzing. So yeah, it's been been really good from, from that. Part of you. And plus, like it gives Kurt a chance to layer his guitar parts or me my, me a chance yeah. to um do, do you know build up synth parts and stuff like that whereas you things are a bit more basic when you're jamming stuff out yeah brilliant um so 
Yeah. So yeah, you, you mentioned your your Facebook fan group uh, on there. Uh, I'm part of it, and I just see how parties and they all are on there. I just think it it's an it's an amazing space, and it's a great tip for other bands as well that might be watching this to um, not necessarily start your own fan group because that's just don't feel right, but if there is somebody that you know is on board with a band give them that scope to start something and start telling other people about your band as well i think it's it's worked really well for you guys i was speaking to the sherlock's last night they've got a similar kind of thing it, yeah. it really works for them I, i've got one for rgm where you can be more you, I don't, you can you can engage with people in a different way in fan groups than what you can on your main like socials can't you yeah yeah so uh, how, how do you how, how how do you feel it's worked for you guys yeah I think it's good like you say I think ideally it's somebody independent it's not the band themselves I mean I pop yeah. in and out I did sp spend a period where I'm completely out of there because I want people to be able to go in there and go oh this one's shit I don't like this track or or no. you know like just say stuff that they wouldn't necessarily say whether uh, where, if you think I'm sort of hovering around yeah um, <laughs> but but yeah it's good I mean it's a, it's a community it's a big community and obviously like there's a community around live music and and uh, yeah. and independent music and up and coming bands and all that kind of stuff. There's lots of people that are passionately support those kind of bands. Uh, we're one of them, um, and it's a, I think there's like nearly five thousand people in that group, and uh, they've all asked yeah. to come in. It's not been added by any, you know like people have to yeah. ask and then get approved to to join it. So it's not yeah. like you just adding adding loads of randoms. <clears throat> so it's great. I mean, it's like. It's it's amazing to see you know build up around shows or releases and seeing people's response in there is is really really good. I mean I'm members of groups myself like for like yeah uh, other music and video games and stuff like that and nerdy yeah. stuff. But um, I like you know it's a different because um, like the, the the more the sort of the, the wider Facebook can be quite toxic sometimes and that's yeah. groups can be toxic as well to be honest. It's a it's a mad time, but uh, <laughs> yeah. On the whole, our, our 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 group is very positive. It's a good place, but, you know, lots of good good hearted people. Yeah, a bit of a cheeky question. Do you have a favourite from anybody in the fans group? Um, uh, Ed Smith is a good friend friend of ours and fan. He's is uh, oh yeah, and David Brown who writes for Freedom the Stars. He's one of the admins. Yeah. Um, and then is is uh, Joe and Tracy who are um, like come to every show, so it'll be rude to say that I didn't love those guys. But yeah, there's there's some that are very vocal, and it's, there's some that probably just sit and you know read other people's stuff, and that's fine and as well. I, I enjoy I enjoy I enjoy Rick Brook on there. But yeah, yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he, 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 he shoots from the hip a lot of the time, doesn't he? But he does, yeah. He, yeah. he, he gets he gets regularly banned from Facebook, Rick. <laughs> But, it's all good, yeah. it's all good. You've got, so, you've, got have, you've got to have personalities, haven't you? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So you, you ended up going full-time and then you announced that you were going back into work. Um, again, mm -hmm. diversifying and, you know, everybody's got bills to pay, everybody's got shit to do. Um, yeah. And you, you, had, you had a history of marketing previously before, because you, you do all the artwork for the, for, the, for the band, don't you, and that kind of stuff, and the yeah. designs for stuff. So yeah. um, just a little chat about marketing, really. Um, uh, on a previous podcast, I was speaking to Rick Lees, and I asked him to define what is marketing, because it's quite a big thing. And he just said it's making shit look cool. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in learning about marketing. If, how, how would you define right. it yourself? I mean, yeah, principally, I'm a desi uh, designer, uh, 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 and like my old job, I was did, did mainly digital design, like web design and things like that. But uh, mm. more recently, like as a freelancer, I've done branding, uh, more, more that kind of thing. Um, marketing is like, like it's creating a tone of voice and a and a and a, and a an authentic um, uh, voice and look for mm. a brand or product or band or whatever it might be. Um, Social media, the age of social media and marketing is is a great two way thing to me. Like you, you know, yeah. um, you're getting feedback, immediate feedback from your audience all the time, so you can build on what you think is going well. And the same as anybody's, you know, personality as well. You like <laughs> you can see when yeah. you, you, you you know it's an instant. You can people see when people think of think, think something you've said is is wrong or irritating or whatever. And they might be those people might be. I mean, obviously, the people always will disagree with you. Yeah. But, um, you sort of 
a brand like a person like a personal line is pro uh, constantly being kept in check by the audience if you know what i mean yeah so that's why i, I think I, I think social media is is on the whole amazing thing for um for for musicians and because it democratizes uh being able to get out there aside from yeah. the fact that you have to put a lot of cash behind things for people yeah. to see things on facebook but you know <laughs> yeah definitely um so uh yeah marketing um so the latest single that you just brought out everything i am yeah amazing video mate nice one um they just filmed inside a, a proper empty manchester arena that must have because i know you played that stage before supporting james and stuff that yeah. must have been quite a venues always feel a lot weird and and strange when you're in them when they're when they when they're quiet and there's, there's nothing going around inside the venue uh, how was it filming that video inside that venue knowing that you know there's so many people that just want to be in there enjoying themselves when 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 you were there filming it it, it, it you looked isolated but i presume that that's the plan because you, you're, just yeah, on, yeah, the, quite, you're on the floor yeah, of the quite, arena and it's quite and it, it's, yeah, it's just impressive fantastic. to watch yeah it's the, it's uh it's eerie isn't it so it's mm. so it, it, it's um I don't know. They say it's you just uh, obviously we hope and you know I'm sure all the days will return when we're all back. Yeah. But for the moment, you know, it's not getting on for a year where nothing's been happening in that building. Where it was, you know, it wasn't just gigs. It was like you know, Marvel on Ice or whatever, <laughs> whatever, yeah. whatever the issue they have in there. You know, there's loads yeah. of you know amazing positive times that that place provides, as well as as well as all the other you know smaller get, uh, yeah. venues in Manchester right up. You know, we've got a lot of venues in this city. Um, it's weird. I mean, we've got we've got uh, the idea came to us when we 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 did a uh, we got invited to take part in their thirtieth anniversary celebrations. I think it was thirtieth, and uh, because we played there with, with James and uh, we yeah. performed um, an acoustic in the same in the same spot more or less. Mm -hmm. And then we were just chatting about it, and like uh, Jim was saying, "I'll be too, you know, we talked to do to do a video in here and like you know get drone footage and all that kind of stuff." So then that was bubbling along for a while and uh, as an idea. And then um, we got Chris involved, who does all our videos from Croftwork, and he liaised with the arena and we put it together. But um, yeah, it was a great space, great sort of, these are not, you know, the, the tune's quite mournful and, and empty and it, it sort of fits yeah. that the, the, mood of, the mood of the track. And um, it's one of our, it's gone down really well. It's one of our better videos, probably, but it's been quite, pretty well received. Yeah, it looks amazing, mate. I just want to officially say it in front of you. I uh, <laughs> really enjoyed it. Thank you. Um, so how has, it, how has it affected the band's mental health? Uh, I'm supporting You Are Not Alone Festival today with my T-shirt on as well. So, so I'd, I'd just like to have a chat with people just to see, you know, how people are getting on and how it's affected you personally. And um. I, I mean, I, I can't speak for the other guys. I think they're okay. Yeah. Um, we all have our up and down days, you know. Mm. Um, it's not we didn't anticipate being having to, you know, take on bits and bobs of day uh, of day jobs bit, uh, uh, again. Really, we wanted to sort of, you know, go right one hundred percent with the band, but you know, mm. needs must. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I have. It's a, there's a lot of time, isn't there, to sort of. Uh, I spend a lot of time, especially I wake up in the morning and I have anxiety sometimes and I'll, it'll be usually be about shit from my past or like school yeah. day stuff or or stuff it from uni or whatever, you know, yeah. nights when I got hammered and done embarrassing stuff and all that. You just you, you dwell on, on 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 past events you can, or you can do. I'm um, doing that, Aaron. I'm doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I've only just realised that I'm doing it by you telling me. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 have, I have just noticed now that I, I am... Other day, I was just thinking, oh, that night out when it just all, when it were just <laughs> horrible in a way. Um, yeah. yeah it, it, so I think you just cycle back to, I, I, I do, and it, there's, there's lots, there's a few, like maybe eight or 10 things that I cycle back to. But yeah. I now have to snap myself out of it and go, you know, I think, you know, you have to try and, it's cliche in it, but you have to try and do exercise. Yeah. And, but that's, I think that's another thing, like, because I'm not, you know, naturally going, moving about as much like you're in the household, so. Yeah, as active as you would be just normally, so you sort of there's a sort of artificial thing about doing any exercise, and it's um, it's hard to keep yourself in check physically and mentally, and everything. It's a very very challenging time. And like, I mean, we're fortunate to have you know 
we've got our kids, there's my wife's furloughed at the moment. So the homeschooling has been done by her in the main. Um, yeah. And I've been, been doing bits of Bob's of freelance and bits of, you know, bits of music um, yeah. myself. So, uh, yeah, as long as, as long, I mean, we personally, we can still be creative. We can still, yeah. We can still make music. We can't do we can't do shows at the moment. We might we might do some live some more live streams, but yeah. we can still make music, and that's um, that's a great outlet. So that's it's still, yeah the positives. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've I've started I've, I'm, a lot of that rings true with me. I've started working from home recently in the day job, and I'm not getting out as much. And I used to I got right into going to gym. I was doing really well, and then they closed. So I, I think I'll be all right again when I go to the gym, but it's just like going out to a supermarket. That's like going out these days, isn't it? You see a lot of people proper dressed up in supermarkets. That's, <laughs> that's, quite, that, that's quite funny. <laughs> the new going out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. But it, so I'm sure the, uh, I'm sure uh, people, you know, it must be doing, you know, harm to retail and like fashion, fashion and stuff mm. like that as well. Cause like you said, if you don't dress up for the supermarket, where are you going to dress up for? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All around Denton, mate. They're, they're still yeah. in the pyjamas, some of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what's coming up next? Um, talk us through what's planned for the next few months. So you've re rescheduled, the tour's been rescheduled again, the European tour. Um, yeah. Fingers crossed that's going to be okay, but potentially, I suppose, uh, that could get rescheduled again, maybe. Yeah, Hopefully yeah possibly. Not. It's September, October, November, November yeah. I think. Uh, fingers crossed. I, I'm hopeful for the UK. Um, mm. uh, and, you know, I don't, who knows what will happen with Europe, but um, there's a lot more countries involved in that. So it's just like there's far yeah. more variables, whereas the UK yeah. is a bit more, you sort of go, well, we seem, the vaccine thing seems to be going well. There's already talk about yeah. lateral flow testing and all that kind of thing, but I don't know. I've, well, we're, we're in the same boat as everybody else. We're just going to have to see see what's said by the government in that really and act accordingly. But uh, we're still writing. We've got six or seven ideas on the go yeah. at the moment. We've not been in we've not been in the studio. We've not been wrestling together for a while. Well, lockdown's yeah. been on. Um, we're aiming to again again in March. Um, this this year's the anniversary of our first album as well. It will be oh, later yeah. in the year, and we've never released that on vinyl so. We're looking at doing that potentially like yeah. this year um <clears throat> but yeah you know nice we one. might release we might release a new single or something at some point but it's uh, like i said it's some this stuff we're, we're writing stuff so we'll just have to see what feels right well watch this space guys um we'll always support you on our gym um we'll push everything out as much as we can we love what you do guys and we love how you interact with your fans and diversify and just keep rolling with the punches it's great to see. Um, and thanks, again, mate. just thanks for really, support. yeah, anytime, mate. We really appreciate your time. Aaron, thanks again, mate. Speak soon. Cheers, Carl. Thanks, mate. Thank you. See you now. Cheers, mate. Bye.